Hello and welcome. God of War is a massive franchise. My introduction to the series was God of War 2018. I then played God of War Ragnarok and I enjoyed both those games quite a lot. They are both absolutely great games. However, there were a lot of people on the interwebs claiming that the original games were much better. And well, I was willing to take them up on these claims. And so I played the original God of War for the first time a few weeks after I completed Ragnarok. And let's just say that I completed the original God of War and then all the other old God of War games within a few weeks. And yeah, I really like these original games. However, in this video, I am going to be focusing on the first God of War game. After playing through it again, I am going to attempt to answer the simple question. Should you play the original God of War in 2024? Now, a common thing about the God of War franchise you will hear is that the new God of War games are much more mature. And I think this is some hard garbage. With this game being a perfect example, why? This game starts off with Kratos. Uh, seemingly alt f in himself. Throughout the story Kratos is struggling to come to terms with the things he has done. He is scarred by his actions and the entire story revolves around him doing the gods a favor so that he can get rid of these memories. And I'm not sure how this is less mature than well Kratos having to raise his annoying son. But apparently it is. Now, in the beginning of the story, Kratos' terrible actions are not made clear. However, it is clear that people fear him. Throughout the story, the game throws these slight hints at the player to indicate that this buff dude you are playing as, well, he's not a hero. And once you learn more about Kratos and his backstory, it becomes clear why people fear him and why he is a broken man and can't come to terms with his actions. Having killed his wife and daughter and how he was tricked into doing so by a god he swore to serve. It's such a great story and everything is set up perfectly in this game. I think the best part of this game story is how the storytelling is perfectly balanced with its gameplay. Needless to say but this is one of the biggest flaws in both of the new God of War games. There are way too many cutscenes that it sometimes completely kills the pacing of the game. Game. However, in this game the cutscenes are perfectly implemented. And speaking of cutscenes, the cutscenes in this game are very well done, especially for its time. I think the story of this game overall is fantastic. Despite there being less of it than the newer games, they absolutely made the most of it. This is a linear game. There are many hidden or branching paths to these levels and these lead to upgrade materials. This game also has fixed camera angles which means you do not control the camera movement. Now the developers were able to use this to their advantage as they can hide some of these paths in smart areas, leaving the player to use their imagination to find them. Another key part of this game is its puzzles. It sprinkles a bunch of puzzles throughout the levels and they are pretty fun. They are simplistic and way less time consuming than some of the puzzles in the newer God of War games. Also these puzzles are still challenging despite its simplicity and I think challenge is exactly what the newer games puzzles lack. Throughout this game you are given more than one challenge to deal with. In one of the puzzles you have to solve you have to place a crate onto a pressure plate. However, the door it triggers is a rotating door, meaning that you can't just place the crate and casually run through the door. So you have to take the crate, kick it onto the pressure plate and roll through the door. 
two challenges to deal with at a time. And again, when a game is challenging, it is way more fun. This game also has platforming and it's good. Why is it good? Well, because you are actually in control. You aren't just pressing a button and the game does all the work for you. It actually has real platforming. Whether it be balancing on a beam without the game supporting you or the legitimate platforming sections that are very cool. This game never ceases to challenge the player even if you are doing the most mundane shit. The climbing in this game is cool as well. Basically when it comes to climbing in games, the climbing usually sucks. However, in this game the devs found a workaround by making you fight while you climb. Now it's not perfect as there are only 4 directions in which you can attack, meaning you will mostly make use of the triangle button, which basically does a wider attack. But it's overall a more smart way to make an otherwise boring task very fun. As for the missions they are pretty well designed. Again this is a linear game so there aren't really any side quests or things like that. The missions are pretty straightforward and they complement the story perfectly. game that's nearly 20 years old, the graphics still look good. However, much like New Vegas, this game looks good because of its environmental design. Right from the start of the game, this game's cool environmental design is at full display. Fighting a bunch of enemies on a ship as well as fighting a bunch of hydras while it is pouring down. It creates this atmospheric environment that's just super cool and it is seen right throughout the game. The the game also makes great use of scale which adds a lot to the environmental design. Whether it be giant boss battles or massive structures, it all comes together to make the environments that much cooler. It also makes Kratos look even more like a badass when he crushes these giant statues or defeats the giant bosses. So that's cool too. The design of some of these levels look fantastic as well. Pandora's temple is a perfect example of that and it is so interesting the way these levels are visually presented. There are also a bunch of world building and setups for later events in this game. A great example of this is when you can see Ares fighting in the background showing the player what they are up against. The music in this game is great as well as it perfectly complements these environments and well I just love great music in video games. The environments overall are very well done and for the time the graphics are pretty damn good. Gameplay is king and the God of War franchise as a whole is pretty good in the gameplay department. Let's start with the leveling up. In this game you collect red orbs which is used to upgrade your abilities and your weapons. You have eyeballs and feathers that upgrade your mana and your health. Upgrading your weapons and abilities make them stronger and also gives you more moves for your weapons. These movesets are great, however there is one of these moves that is super OP and it basically is a cheese and I wish it was a little bit more balanced. All of the abilities or powers that you get from the gods are super cool and all of them are useful. The game also makes you use some of them to solve some of the puzzles which is pretty cool. You also have a Spartan Rage which allows Kratos to become even more stronger. There is another weapon that you will get as well. Well, this weapon being the Blade of Artemis. Now it is a pretty cool sword and feels much different than the Blades of Chaos. However, by the time you receive this weapon, it is way too late in the game and your blades will most likely be at a high level. So you will just continue to use them as they will be way better. Now this game has quick time events as well. Over the last few years, quick time events are frowned upon 
And for good reason. A lot of games lazily threw in quick time events without any thought to it. However, in this game they are done right. Keeping with the theme of challenge, these quick time events are challenging. Press the wrong button, well you will get punished. Button mash to slow, you will get punished. And how? This is a game where spamming faster actually makes a difference, which is not the case with a lot of these games that have quick time events. Enemy variety is great as well as this game will constantly give the player new enemies to deal with. These enemies are satisfying to fight as a lot of them have their own weaknesses, strengths and some even have gimmicks to take them down. The boss fights are great as well, except for the final boss fight as the game weirdly strips you of all your abilities and the fight leaves you and Ares to share a health bar, basically creating a tug of war type of fight. And it is very weird. The combat overall feels heavy, impactful and satisfying. It is challenging and fun. The player is always on their toes in these battles and it's why it is so fun. This game's biggest strength is just how it always manages to challenge the player. Whether it is the combat, the platforming or the climbing, the game doesn't give the player time to rest, or more accurately, the game doesn't give the player time to get bored. This game is a whole lot of fun and still holds up in basically all its elements. So to answer the question, should you play the original God of War in 2024? The answer is absolutely yes. This game is old but gold. That is all I have for this video. I thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.